Hey everybody, this is Eric Stark with Radio Arizona RV. Today's episode is number 59, and I'm going to ask the question, do you enjoy your RV? Today's episode is not going to be about RV maintenance and education. It's not going to be about tips on things you can do to repair your RV. It's that question. It's been in the back of my mind for months now. I thought I'd finally do an episode on it. But before I get into the nuts and bolts of the episode, I just want to remind you to go to Radio Arizona RV. There's links to all of our websites there, ArizonaRVPartCenter.com, SunProManufacturing.com, and HotBoatRopes.com. Those are the different products we sell, the different websites, so check those out. Also, we have a YouTube channel, which is accessible through Radio Arizona RV, and there's some tips and stuff there for the RVer, so you might want to subscribe to that, but at least check it out. And as always, you can use the contact page. I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, ideas for topics, in fact, I would like to find someone that could write some content for me to help with some of the blogs I want to start doing, some different things on the website. If anybody's interested, contact me. I'm always looking for another way to go with this. I want to help everybody as much as I possibly can. Use the website, and of course, our phone number's on the website, so you can call me too. You don't even have to go by email. You can just give me a phone call. I'm one of the few businesses today that answers phones, it seems like. Everybody complains about customer service. Well, we answer the phone here. You know, we answer it under our business name, Highway 93 RV, which is our local name. Okay, enough of that. Now, RVs, do you enjoy yours? Right off the top, you might say, yeah, I enjoy it. It's great. I use it all the time. Use it on weekends. I go fishing. I go hunting. Take the family out. But I'm getting to something else here. More of, is your RV like your house? Is it comfortable? And the reason why I'm asking this is, I see the inside of a lot of RVs. And these are RVs that aren't full-timers. I mean, I see, you know, full-time RVs as well. When you're in Arizona, there's full-timers galore there. Totally different ballgame. When you're living in your RV, whether it's full-time or six months out of the year, different ballgame than a lot of the RVers, our typical RV customer, if you will, my store, or who listens to the podcast. What gets me thinking is the RVs that I see, like the ones that come in here that are a year old, two years old, 10 years old, And they just don't seem like anybody's ever used it. I'm talking about the people here that go out for a weekend or maybe a few weeks at a time or a month or two at a time. So they're not full-timers. They're not living it for six months. They're using an RV several times throughout the year for different lengths of time. But as I said, sometimes I go into them and it just doesn't look like anybody's ever used it. Not that it's perfect inside, you know, like brand new. What I mean is it just doesn't look like anybody's been using it. It looks like a drab rental. You got your furniture, your appliances. There's nothing hanging on the walls. There's no rugs on the floor. The beds have that generic looking bedspread that quite often comes with new RVs, you know, the cheapest bedspread they could actually put on it. And some cases they match the decor and it's just easy to leave. Or sometimes it's nothing at all. It's just a mattress. Cabinets are empty. The drawers are empty. The sound system is just a regular old stock sound system. Bathroom might have a shower curtain, but it looks like the cheap one that came with the RV. And when you buy an RV and it comes with a shower curtain, that's the cheapest possible shower curtain you can get. I mean, RV manufacturers don't fluff up that kind of stuff. Now, I know there's different circumstances for everybody who owns an RV. Not all RVs are going to look the same or be used the same. Everybody has a different vision of what their RV should be used for and how it should be used. But if you look at your house. Compare how your house looks on the inside and look at the feel of your house. You know, it has a feel. It represents you. It represents you and your spouse. It represents you and your family. And does your RV have that same look and feel? Your RV is essentially your second home, right? Maybe you're not living in it, but you're using it. It's a second home. When you go on vacation in your RV, that becomes your home. Now, I know there's a huge difference between the two. An RV and a house, completely different. And you're living in your home much longer. You spend more time in your home than you do your RV. But, you know, when you look in your house, doesn't it have a comfy chair, that real comfortable chair that you just love? Isn't it decorated with your likes and dislikes? Now, some of you listening might say, well, my spouse does all the decoration, so I just put up with it. 
But, you know, overall, your home (laughs) is decorated to the way you like it. It's comfortable to you. It's your home. You know it, even if it's not you that decorated it. Maybe you're not overly fond of the style, but it is the home that you're comfortable with. There's pictures of your children. There's pictures of your grandchildren hanging on the wall, sitting on tabletops. Maybe there's that awesome space in the house that you just absolutely love. It's just your space. Maybe it's your office. Maybe it's a section that's been carved out of one of the bedrooms. Maybe it's the kitchen. For those that love to cook, that would be your space. Or for some, it might be the garage or workshop. Now, you've got it. That's my space. I love a garage and a workshop filled with tools, be able to do things myself because I'm a do-it-yourselfer. Although my home office has been called NASA because it looks like a control center for NASA with computers and the such. And my office or my studio here at, at my business looks the same way. You know, got multiple computers, 65-inch monitor on the wall, got podcasting equipment, got pictures on the wall that reminds me of home, reminds me of my family. It's my space. And no matter what it is, we call it home. It's our house. That's where we live. So you kind of see where I'm going with this. Does that resonate some? Do you understand what I'm talking about? How our home is our home. And even after a long vacation, you know, you're you're driving up your street. You're kind of excited to get home. Sleep in your own bed, right? Take a nice long shower. So I think you get it. Home is home. But why is the RV sometimes so different? When you're camping, isn't your RV now your home? If it is your home while you're camping, it should be a space that is comfortable and practical, just like your house. Now, it's not going to be the exact same as your house. There's no way you could replicate that. That'd be an impossibility. But it should be comfortable or comfy, as I like to say in its own unique way. Before I moved to Montana in my office in Arizona, I had a chair and everybody sat in it, just loved this chair. We called it the comfy chair. Now, because when we moved, I got rid of the chair for various reasons. It was getting old and I decided to just move on, but that was the comfy chair. And that chair actually started out in my trailer at one point in time and it was the comfy chair in the trailer. It was just awesome. Our RV should be comfortable. So what can we do to make our RV a little more comfortable and to make it feel like somebody lives in it? Because as I said, I go into these trailers and motorhomes and it seems to be trailers more than motorhomes. No, I take that back. It's probably equal. They look like rentals. It's like the people that own it, they've done nothing to set it up as their house. And maybe that's just their circumstances. Maybe that's just the way they want it. It's And they take everything out of their house when they go on vacation. And, you know, I'm not that way. I like as little as work as possible. Whatever is going to be for the trailer for camping, that's what I'm going to buy for the trailer. Double up on pots and pans, toaster, coffee maker, whatever it might be. But that's, you know, appliances. That's, you know, of course, makes it easier when it is time to go. All that stuff's in the cabinets ready to go. And I think vast majority of people do that. But what about simple little things? I was reading a a blog the other day on RVers. It was kind of interesting because, you know, these are full-timers. And they talked about, you know, preparing for Christmas and different holidays. And it would cost them $15 to prep for a holiday because they'd just go buy a picture and put it on the wall or a little decoration and put it up somewhere. The point was, it doesn't cost a lot to do something with your RV. It's a small space. You can, you know, buy some throw rugs, put them on the floor. It's not a big deal. They're not expensive. You know, get bed coverings that are more comfortable that you like, not what came with the RV or just something that's cheap and kind of a throwaway thing. Eh, If it gets dirty or messed up, I'll just chuck it. Some decorations on the wall that you like, some pictures, some things in the RV that remind you of home, that remind you of maybe what you're doing. Maybe you you, you just enjoy the outdoors and you go to a certain national park every year, maybe several times. You know, some things from that national park, from the gift shop, tailor it to you. It doesn't have to be like you're decorated like your home where you reside year round, but decorate it so it's you. It doesn't cost a lot and really does make the trailer or the RV that much more comfortable. It makes it you. 
Well, when you go on a trip, do you have to just pack everything from your house into the trailer or do you already have things packed? Because the more you have to do to pack, the less you're going to want to pack. But if you leave things in the trailer or the RV that you're going to use all the time when you're out, then maybe just buy duplicates. And I said that a moment ago, but it makes life easier. And not saying, you know, replicate everything you own, that's for sure. Don't go buy a second laptop to leave in your RV. Don't go buy a second iPad to leave in your RV. That's ridiculous. But there's a lot of little things you can just leave in there. So when it's time to go, maybe you just check that it's there, but you don't have to drag it in and out of the house. And that stuff just stays in the RV. Because when you get to where you're going, when you get to that final destination, you know, you want to be able to take care of things. If you want to bake cookies, repair the RV. Does it become a big old challenge? Like, oh boy, I'm going to have to go to the store and buy something to do that. I'm going to have to go buy some tools. I'm going to have to go buy this. I'm going to have to go buy that. That just takes away from the whole trip. That just takes away from the fun of it. Have the things on hand that you need, that you want to use when you're out RVing. But make it comfortable. You know, there's a lot of things in my trailer that are just there, that I know they're there. Like we have a lot of blankets, pillows. If we got into cold weather, we're covered. If for some reason someone came and visited us, <laughs> for some reason, say I like no one likes us, but ever want to visit us. <laughs> Everybody loves us. <laughs> but anyway, if somebody wanted to come spend the night, there we have plenty of room. We have pillows, blankets, and they'd be comfortable. We'd be comfortable. And our trailer is, has been kind of redesigned on the inside. It's a toy hauler. And it's not like your typical toy hauler. You know, it's been made more comfortable. It's, it's what works for my wife and I. And it's a little bit different. Could I sell it as a toy hauler still? Oh, I could. I have to do some modifications, remove some stuff. But it's a pretty roomy trailer. And so it works out perfect for us. And we have some things in there, even key holders, you know, just something as simple as a key holder. So when you walk in, you have a place to put your keys. Because, you know, in an RV, a set of keys on the counter all of a sudden is this big old giant thing. It's like a big old rock in the way, right? Because an RV is so small, even a big RV is small. They're cramped for space. A key ring or key ring holder, the amount on the wall, puts the keys out of the way right by the front door. That way there's less clutter. Little things like that, you know, it helps keep it cleaner, more organized. Because we know that after you set two or three things on a counter, it looks like the entire RV is just a mess. You know, that's something I read from a full-timer, and I agree with that. I feel the same way. I don't like clutter and stuff. So little things. I mean, there's a million little things you can do. It doesn't take a big budget. It just takes a little bit of imagination. But when you're on a trip, it's just going to make it that much more enjoyable. It feels like home. When you're on a trip someplace and you're staying in a motel, you're there for a few days, a cheap motel, that's exactly what it feels like you're staying at is a cheap motel. You know, you do so much during the day, you want to stay out of the room because it's just, it's lame. So you, you go and recreate all day. Well, the same thing with an RV, but with an RV, you should want to go back to it at night. Hey, chill out, watch some movies, entertain yourselves enjoy it. You know, with a motel, you know, you can go watch a movie, but it just sucks, man. This bland room, junk on the wall, stuff that doesn't mean a thing to you that some motel builder thought was great. And even high-end hotels, they're a little bit better, more comfortable, they're cleaner, nicer, but it's still just a room. It's sanitary. Make your RV comfortable. And there's a bazillion ways to do it. If you go online, I mean, there's so many ideas, so many things to make it nicer. Or if you're out camping, find that guy that's a full-timer. Check out his setup. See what he's got going on. Of course, you can't pack all the same stuff into your RV, but it'll give you an idea. It gives you a direction. Making your RV comfortable will make you want to use it more. You'll look forward to using it. One of my friends just got lumped back from a six-week trip. First time he's ever gone that long. But he enjoyed it. And, you know, he's already thinking of, hey, this is what I can do to my RV. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He wants to make it better. So the next time they do that, it's going to be that much more enjoyable. That's just something that came to my mind. It's just been nagging at me, like I said, for a few months. And I just wanted to throw that out there. And most of you probably already know that, you know, an RV is your second home and you should make it comfortable. 
But just with the amount of RVs I see, as bland as they are, the sanitary rooms look like rentals. I just thought I'm going to throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. So I want to thank you for listening. Again, this is episode number 59 at Radio Arizona RV. Don't forget to check out our website, RadioArizonaRV.com. And thanks again.